Hi guys, it's Trevor Tolliver here and you're listening to the Blue Day podcast. Welcome back, my friends, to the podcast that never ends. Yes, folks, this is the Blue Day podcast, and for Chelsea fans everywhere, every day is a blue day. I am your host, Keith Lawrence, and joining me again this week, he's back for more. It's Milan Laukovic. Milan, welcome back to the show. Nice to have you back. How's things been? Uh, thanks for having me, yeah. Um, all been good, all been good. Now resting, um, deserved rest after um, some games, you know, this season. But um, I'm ready to rest and uh, recharge for whatever is next. Well, before we discuss Chelsea, it was something that we discussed bef- before the weekend and I did watch the full highlights of it. You obviously had a cup mm. final played on Sunday. It was at the uh, Pauk Stadium, wasn't it? It was at... Um, yeah, nice, the, nice, lovely ground. Great, st- really great stadium. I've seen it in European games when it's full. Yeah. And the atmosphere is very, very intimidating. But yeah. you had the cup final. What was that like for you? And, you know, is it sort of looking back on your particular season? How do you think you've done? At, at, no, at personally, I did good. Personally, I did good. I got from the season what I needed, which is a lot of games. Proved my fitness that I'm possibly black, but back to as the best as I felt in uh, recent years. Probably last few years is the best I felt or pitches I felt, and um, it was good. We lost, um, uh, sadly, but uh, from a personal point of view, I, I enjoyed the game. Obviously, nice pitch, um, two or three thousand, something between that. People came, it was decent atmosphere, and um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Listen, when on the pitch like that, you have to enjoy it, so it was good. Yeah. It was good, and again. Playing in a cup final, no matter what level it is, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's still a great team, occasion. This, still a great this occasion. Team, it, was, it was a big occasion, but it's not meant to be. But the other team, obviously, they they are not bad. They're decent. They've got the playoffs for to get promoted um, to the um, uh, I think first first league. So um, um, it was difficult, but I think we were in the game. If you saw, obviously, you saw a little yeah, bit of I the did. game. I did. Um, there was not too much in it, but we didn't score the chances. And gave them penalty and uh, one mistake at the back when we tried to play out of football. That is football. And this is where we sort of lead quite nicely to the state of football at Chelsea at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll briefly touch on the Newcastle game because, to be honest, it was just a meaningless friendly, it seemed. Yeah. Um but we'll sort of talk about the season as a whole, and it's been what well in my lifetime, it's probably been one of the worst seasons. I would say, based on the squad, not just in terms of individual quality, but in fact, in terms of how it is structured as a team, I would say it's yeah. probably the worst in my lifetime. And I, even going back as far as August, when I went to Ellen Road to watch Leeds batter us, I went to St Mary's to see Southampton batter us. And this was still under Tuchel and things just wasn't right even then. And then obviously Tuchel left. We bring Potter in and it was an experiment that went horribly wrong. I get why Potter was in. I think many people understood that why Potter was going to be brought in and it was going to be a new Including game. me. I wanted, I was happy when the, he was appointment. So yeah. yeah, and it was just, I think what Todd was looking to do Look at again. Looking back now, in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. The, he didn't want it to be a case of what happened in the Roman era, whereby it'd be successful manager like an Ancelotti or even a Hiddink to come in on a short-term basis or a Mourinho. It would be like young manager, and we build for the future. The problem with that was the amount of players he had in the team, tactics, and just looked a fish out of water throughout a lot of that season. There was games where we didn't turn up. There was no pattern of play. And Milan, I mean, we'll, we'll obviously we'll, we'll, t- we'll get your thoughts on it. You know, looking back from that, do you feel that appointment just 
didn't sit right is from a player's perspective because there are obviously certain rumours that have gone round over the last few months about certain players' views on players. Listen, the, the rumours come out when everything is going wrong, everything comes out, you know. So people start making rumours up. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. So it's difficult to say about this. But you can. there's not rumours when someone's winning titles, you know what I mean? There's not rumours if someone is playing for top four most of the time. Most of the time, everything bad comes when more when bad is happening on the pitch, more bad is coming from outside and then everything is created around that, everything is negative, blah, blah, blah. We have to remember with Porter, and I think we touched on that last time uh, we did the podcast, um, many injuries at the start. He started good. I think first few games we won as well, or five, six games without the... Uh, well, we beat Milan it, twice, home and away, in the Champions there League. There you go. So that, th was, that, that was, that was period, good. Yeah. Then he beats Dortmund. He beats Dortmund as well, obviously, a while later. Then there was a World Cup. So, not easy. It's not an excuse, because there's still quality players there when um, he could have implemented his self-play. But sometimes, it just it doesn't click. And you have to go. You have to go. This is this is football. Football doesn't wait for anybody, especially at a club like Chelsea. And they try. We said that before. They try to give him time. They were waiting, 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 waiting. And they, you know, everybody was like, okay, when is the time to change? And they did change. So now we got Pochettino. It's all, um, obviously, it's all been done. It's all been confirmed. We can look forward to it. Good style of play. Um work off the ball from his past teams. Okay, Paris is a little bit different. You've got the superstars there, so uh, it's not easy to tell them. I remember when they played Paris Saint-Germain against Man City and Messi, Mbappe, Neymar. Three of them just stood up, stood up front, waited for other people to obviously win the ball and pass to them. Doesn't get you success, I'm afraid. Everybody needs to work. Maybe you can have one passenger, but look at Man City, man. On the ball, unbelievable. Off the ball, even better, probably. Yeah. Fantastic, man. They chase the ball like crazy. The way they set up on the pitch as well to win straight away, like to hit the counter press, is unbelievable. And that's why they have a lot of energy and they drain energy from the other team, make them play so deep. Then it's, then you're like 60, 70 yards from the goal, 70 meters from the goal, you know? Difficult, so difficult. Fantastic team, obviously. Guardiola knows what he's doing, so he's not a stupid player. I still can't get over how they how they played well against Real Madrid. They were just on it from minute one. Man, nothing. Especially, especially Madrid, nothing. the second leg. Nothing. F 15, what was it? Under 20 passes in like 15 minutes. Something like that. Under 30 passes. Yeah. Uh, Real Madrid with the top players. Yeah. Obviously, tactically, maybe, Carlo told them, okay, let's wait a little bit back. Hit them on the counter with the pace. Or Vinicius, Rodrigo. Karim comes a little bit deep mm. to link up, but it was just not working. Man City were on it. As I said, the way they were set up to, if they lose the ball around the box, to win it back straight away and go back to attack the box is just amazing. Man. They work hard. Off the ball, with the ball, they just work, man. And obviously, then the, your quality and talent shows uh, when you have so much ball control. Back on... Potter, and we'll sort of discuss players mm. as well. We'll discuss obviously players that are looking to leave and will be leaving soon. Do you think the January transfer window, when we was buying the likes of Mudrik, Maduki, and and Enzo, we was buying quite a few players in January. Do you think that actually caused an issue with Potter to the point where he already had a large squad anyway before January, mm. and Chelsea were trying to spend their way out of trouble but it just made things a whole lot worse because player teams behind us were starting to get results we weren't getting results the likes of Villa that was then overtaking us Fulham were overtaking us and you had a whole raft of players some of them weren't getting any minutes some of them were and you're thinking why Potter's treatment of Aubameyang which would be interesting to get your thoughts on Uber in a minute but it just it just seemed things just wasn't working. Whatever they tried, whether it was Potter or Bowley or whoever, none of it was working. It just lasted throughout the whole season. Um, with the players, listen. Obviously, if something not going right, you try to uh, if available. Obviously, we got Modric ahead of Arsenal. Otherwise, he would have gone there. 
at the moment did doesn't work. Uh, Noni, uh, he got in, uh, at the end of the season into the team, showed some glimpses. So obviously he can uh, improve next season under Pochettino, hopefully. Enzo he was probably one of the best players, you know, second half of the season. Uh, uh, so um, it's not easy with the big squad. Obviously, we we, we said before, Ziyech. It was strange. Ziyech um, was uh, on the way to Paris. Because of email, apparently, I don't know, that's what they say. Uh, it was, uh, it didn't go through. Then he started two days later against Perth. Yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? That does make yeah. sense. Well, just to keep him happy. I don't know. Listen, difficult. I'm not, I'm not a manager. I can't see it, but just that, it just doesn't make sense for someone you don't need. And then two days later, he starts against Perth. Strange. And... But it's football, anything happens. Who knows? Maybe some. Uh, Somebody told him to play him to keep him. I don't know. I don't know. And Strange. even Potter's treatment of Abamyang. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Potter doesn't rate him. That's fine. Abamyang came in two days later. Tuchel gets sacked. So mentally... it happened. Uh, I saw that before. I saw that before many times. I extended my loan. I remember at Doncaster, my first loan, and then uh, two days later, the manager got sacked. So from that point, how did? that make you feel? Because you, I'm assuming you signed for Doncaster on loan. I signed based, for Doncaster based, for, based on the for coach, three months. Based, yeah. Yeah. yeah, first first on one month loan, uh, that, that went and then went back to Chelsea and they said uh, they want me again. But we, I think Donny at that time uh, didn't have a good start in the championship. So, um, obviously, I'm, I'm new to this world. I'm 18 years old. This is my first uh, professional uh, involvement, uh, like uh, championship was my de debut season for, uh, in professional football. So uh, I, I don't know what's going on uh, with things like this. So I extended my loan uh, after a month for another month. And um, that was on Saturday after the game. Monday, I come into training and I got a message from uh, the manager so, saying thanks for last six years or whatever. I'm like, I've been here two months, what do you mean? And then he called me and he was like, oh, we got sacked and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, well, what now? So I called my Chelsea manager, Dermot Drummy at that time. Uh, may he rest in peace. Um, and he told me what to do to go speak to the new manager and find out the situation. And uh, obviously after one month, my loan just finished and I just went back. But that was my first involvement with a uh, thing like this. So with Aubameyang, I can see what was going on there, but listen, he's a top striker, yeah. Mad history and and everything. Uh, Premier League goal scorer. Um, but maybe the manager doesn't see in training what he wants from the striker in his system. Apparently, I don't know. There's a clause in the contract that if he plays some games, they pay him some bonus or whatever. Maybe that. That that's there, you know what I mean? Maybe that's in back of the mind. So they tell him, okay, don't play him. Anything, anything. And then Lampard plays him in Arsenal because he sees in training that okay, uh, uh he could help me. And then he does, he touches the ball four times, and two of them is from kickoff. So uh, listen, obviously the players around him didn't help him at that at that time in the game. I remember Chelsea were shocking, but just bad season. Uh, Four seasons for, for him, hard, hard in a team who who lacks confidence. Same for Mudrick. Mudrick, you can see when I watch the trainings um, on YouTube, he looks good, man. Looks sharp, looks decent. I think the Chelsea, Chelsea player will tell you that too. Uh, looks built for Premier League, works hard off the pitch. Okay, he posts Instagram. That's the new generation. Sometimes he doesn't help himself with what he posts. At the times he posts, but. He needs to learn very quickly because now social media slaps you up straight away. Especially if you're not performing on the pitch, comes back from two days ago. If you posted something and then you missed uh, a chance at Man U, comes back to you straight away, slaps you up, slaps you up. So uh, I hope somebody explains that to him, but I'm sure people did. Um, so yeah, he just needs to put his head down, work hard in pre-season and do what the manager says, what the manager wants from him, all of them, all of the young players that came. And uh, you have to impress the new manager, otherwise you're out. If you don't bite into into this project, you're out. It's not a problem. You Chelsea buy someone else, not a problem, as you can see. And you could see that before many times. Chelsea don't wait for nobody, man. Well, you say that. 
Potter left after another pathetic display against Aston Villa at home. Yeah. Many hundreds of fans left after the second goal. Many more went <laughs> before the final whistle. Yeah. Potter goes. Uh, Bruno Soto comes in for the game against Liverpool. Again, you know, nil-nil draw against two bad sides. Lampard comes in. And you're thinking, okay, this could be a lift up. Lampard knows the club; he can get a tune out of a lot of the players that were there. Especially for the fans, a little bit liven up, you know, start time. So, yeah. Absolutely, it gives a it gives the fans a lift. But then it's defeat after defeat after defeat. By the time it gets to the point where Lampard may get a tune out of, of, a, of a couple of them, it's too late, and then you get to a stage where a lot of them are then ruled out for the season because of. Occurring injuries like James and yeah. Chilwell again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hindsight's again, we will talk about it, it's a wonderful thing. Do you think that perhaps Chelsea just should have said, you know what, Potter, we'll give you to the end of the season? Yeah, it might not be working, but we've got a little bit of faith left in you. We'll give you to the rest of the season. Because I'm thinking from Lampard's point of view, he's obviously come in, he's looked at it thinking, I could maybe get another job after this. And for Todd, it's a case of I've got a fan favourite to come in to mm -hmm. ease the pressure off my back. Is that how you saw it, or is it a case of you 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 saw it completely different? There's a little bit of fixing how I see it, in my opinion, a little bit of fixing with the fans. Okay, something didn't go well this season. Let's bring a legend and a coach or manager who did really well with Chelsea under difficult circumstances uh, two years before, two and a half years before, when there was uh, no Eden Hazard and there was no transfer, uh, there was transfer ban. Hmm. And uh, he made top four with the teams, introduced the young players who are now, um, three of them are spine of the team. If Mason Mount obviously is leaving, then that's, uh, I think that would be a mistake, but Obviously, it's uh, up to club, up to him. We don't know what's going on there. We don't know what's going on there. So, uh, uh, it's up to them to decide. But I think they should do um, everything to keep him. Uh, especially now Felix is not staying. You've got Nekuku. You can have Mount. Use the money that you paid for Nekuku, um, uh, Felix. Use it for Mount. For Mason Mount now. If you want to wanna keep him. Or if you can't agree, obviously on uh, wages, then he's gone. Take the take the money for him, uh, whatever they think he's worth, and uh, buy someone else. Or if you have someone ready from a uh, academy, uh, try uh, try try bring them in. But with Lampard, so difficult, man. Difficult situation. Not many managers will probably uh, come at that time here. Um, with what's going on behind the scenes, um, but obviously didn't didn't work out, which which happens, man. It's sad. It's sad for, for obviously for a legend like him. But I see conferences, how he speaks. He was very disappointed from what he's seen, from when he was playing. Obviously, you have the characters, the 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 top characters, and then obviously when he was there as a manager, uh, he built he built something. He built. How what is it to be for Chelsea? How to play for Chelsea? What, what what do you need? Explain to people. Now he's trying to do that to the players that are still there and some new ones. And he said, um, "Has been gone. The standards dropped. Standards dropped. And if you don't have standards, man, what do you want to do on the pitch? It doesn't matter if the manager tells you this, 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 or this. If it doesn't work in training, if you don't train how you play, you're gonna get found out, especially at the Premier League level, in my opinion. So." Difficult situation for him, but hopefully he can bounce back. Obviously, great guy. Works hard. Worked hard as a player. Works out as a manager. Wants the best for his uh, team, for the players. So, um, hopefully um, someone gives him another chance. If he goes to Championship or someone in Premier League, maybe not now. But if he goes to Championship, I'm sure he can do a job, uh, good job there. He did it with Derby, so why not? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything uh, is damaged for him. Do you know what I mean? Maybe slightly because of Chelsea not getting results now. But the damage has been done way before. You know, they just tried to fix. Did it happen? Okay, the damage has been done though. If he came fixed, then everybody's saying, "Oh, we should keep him. We should keep him." But 
maybe he I don't know. It's it's football, man. You cannot you cannot uh, think too much ahead. You know, have to think now. How to think now? But that that's it. Done. Pochettino is here. Finished. Are you happy with Poch? Obviously, it was announced a few days ago that he's the contract's all signed. It's all sealed. He'll be coming on the first of July. I am assuming that he's obviously mm. started a little bit of work beforehand. Before it was behind the scenes. Yeah, it seems yeah. as if. And we'll we'll touch on players obviously departing in a minute, but it seems he's already starting to trim the heavy squad down a little bit. So he he although mm. it's officially he starts on the first of July, he's basically starting now, isn't he? Hundred percent behind the scenes. Uh, we would be foolish not to think that he uh, he did something behind the scenes already. So uh, yeah, obviously I'm happy. Uh, one of the uh, top top managers out there. Um, didn't work out for him at Paris, but gets another chance at Chelsea. Obviously, he's from Spurs, so he has a lot to do uh, to uh, win the fans. <laughs> but if he gets results, who cares where he's from, man? Who cares? Get the results. Get get team playing nice football uh, with good in uh, intensity, good attitude. Work out of the ball. I'm sure they will because from what I've heard and what I read about his philosophy and this, I like it. I like it. Um, and his first team at the time help? was... He I was just going to say, sorry, Milan, do you think it'll help yeah. the, the young players that we've got in the squad? And we do, have, the average age of the squad is quite young, although we've got the likes of... Yeah, now he's down, it's a lot down, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A, lot, it's a lot down. He, he helped players improve at Tottenham. He helped, obviously, Harry Kane. He helped yeah. Deli Alley. look where he is yeah. now. Toby out of Earworld, Jan Vertonghen, players like that. He helped mould a team to be competitive although it was Tottenham yeah yeah competitive but yeah although they weren't winners they made them competitive and it was a style of football that people did appreciate and it did help players careers become better is that ideally what Chelsea need rather than a manager like a Mourinho or, or an Ancelotti they need someone that is going to nurture them rather than will be like more of a commander more of a general but more of a nurturer to the point where they they can make. Mm, who knows, my friend? Who, know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Imagine Ancelotti there, Mourinho there. Who knows? Everybody works with different characters. The generation now is so, so different. Uh, if it works, we don't know until we will see some improvements uh, after pre-season. I mean, even pre-season, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens in pre-season. If they play well, if you come to first uh, two months of the uh, Premier League and you uh, lose or you don't win, uh, then who cares if you win in pre-season or if you played well, if you have a lot of energy in pre-season. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we have to take a step-by-step, -step, uh, see who comes in, Trim the squad, as you said, uh, and many people uh, think that as well. Um, it's it's clearly to see that needs to be done, and um, they yeah they they have to impress the new manager, and um, I'm sure he will bring his style of play. As I said, he was decent, and um, they got preseason. Mm. But I think positive. I think positive. A lot of talent that shows. Even Frank Frank Lampard said, obviously, you can see there's clear talent. There's so many glimpses. There was glimpses. Oh, this is good. Oh, this was nice. You know what I mean? But just not enough. Not consistent. Chelsea next uh, season needs consistency. Can they get it? We will see. Well, one player who I thought when he came in in January and did quite well, and there were times where he played and it was like, this guy's too good for this club based on no. how he was playing and the results was Jao Felix. 16 million for a loan fee, which was astronomical amount back in sort of thinking about it now. At the time, I was disappointed because I'm thinking this is a guy that we, you know, we should sign permanently. Why are we getting him on loan? Obviously, there might have been issues with transfer fees, mm. agents. But then I'm thinking if he does well, we could end up signing him because Atletico might want the money. And obviously, we're looking at improving the team. Poch has come in 24 hours later. No, we don't want Joe Felix. Do you think it was a missed opportunity with Felix? Do you think that perhaps Felix isn't made for the Premier League? Or do you think oh. Felix do you think Felix might end up at another Premier League club? How would you rate Joe Felix's time at Chelsea? Not enough. Not enough. I said to you before, um, the last uh, podcast, another loan, Max. But 
looks he looks good, man. Good player. Good player on the ball. Nice, silky. He's not a striker. Hard, 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 hard. Maybe, maybe you know, he came to the wrong team. Do you know what I mean? Player like that. Uh, he's also in Atletico Madrid, which is completely different style than he probably look. He would look better at. But to spend on him, what would what would it be? Eighty million, seventy million? No, 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 no. Come on. At eighty, no. about eighty to eighty-five, probably. No, no, no. Max another loan, but manager comes in obviously, doesn't want him. That's it. He's not a player. Goes back. But no, I wouldn't. Um, not 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 for me at this time. At this time, if he goes to next another Premier League uh, team, and does well. Maybe he would look better in the Arsenal team because they were flying, attacking, you know, uh, at the obviously at the start of the season towards the end, they did both of it, but or maybe he would look better at Man City. Everybody does. <laughs> everybody does. <laughs> uh, everybody does. But the, I'm trying to put him somewhere where maybe he's player. He has played, obviously, obviously uh, scored a nice goal at Old Trafford. Um, so, nice, nice player, man. Nice player, but maybe... Uh, he just didn't do enough to get eighty million for him. That to answer answer that, do you know what I mean? Could he also be the fact with his with his goal return and his overall contributions as well? Obviously, that listen may have stats, triggered stats. It. People watch too much stats. People watch too much stats. Hmm. If somebody doesn't play good and but scores, fine. But let's let's uh, or assist corner is the assist. Do you know what I mean? Uh, flick with the head is an assist. Like. Hmm. Too much stats sometimes. Too much looking at the, the the numbers and that. With the eye, if you look at the player with the eye, you know if if he's good or not. Felix is good. He's he's a nice player, but just didn't do enough for for the eighty million to spend on him. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Eighty million you spend you spend on player probably Grealish. Grealish, you know what I mean. Hundred Grealish you spend on. Uh, Maybe Leal from AC Milan. You spend on him eighty million from, but who knows? Maybe uh, Leal from uh, Italy comes to Premier League. Doesn't work for him. He's football man. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. You don't know if he clicks or not. People are saying uh, bad things about uh, Anthony. Anthony is not not an idiot. He's a nice player, man. Good player. His first year in Premier League. Next year maybe he does well. He he does better, but. You 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 cost the club whatever the your team uh wants wants the money. Do you know what I mean? If I say if you have four year contract, uh let's say uh Lukaku, let's say uh he's Inter player now, yeah, he's doing fantastic. Let's say he has a four year contract in uh Inter. If Inter Milan say three hundred million, and Chelsea want him, then for three hundred million they must buy him. They wouldn't go less. Because he has a four-year contract there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't want to sell someone, you don't sell. If they give you 300 million, that, gone. So now that player is 300 million. It's not his fault. It's nobody's fault. <laughs> you know? that That's just football. That's just it's football. It's not the player's fault so, with the price tag. No, man. No, no, no. No. And uh, I just said Lukaku, um, from the top of my head, obviously, he's a Chelsea player and we paid 100 million for him. At that time, he looks like a... Bargain because he's been fantastic in, in Italy. Obviously, then things happen. I I said my uh little bit about that um in the last podcast. But now, obviously, rumors read that Pochettino wants to speak to him, which is good, which I agree with. But apparently, he doesn't want to come back. Who knows? I hope he's does. I hope he does precisions. They speak to him because, as I said, when he's fit, you can see now, man, he is a machine. Do you know what I mean? Works hard, man. Machine, strong, pace. Uh, scores goals. Scored over 100 goals um, in the Premier League. Now I'm seeing he's dating Megan Thee Stallion. So he's, his confidence is sky high. Do you know what I mean? He needs to play. <laughs> Just play him, man. In the final against Man City, he needs to play. But I think Jekyll will play with Martinez. Because um, that's what's been happening in Champions League. Maybe uh, the manager, uh, a little bit loyalty there. But... Let's see. Let's see. I hope that would be, be a double. huge call. If he drops, if he drops Lukaku for Eden Jezka, that's a huge yeah. But he has been doing that. No, man. I he know, I know. That. But obviously different with a final. But Lukaku, and since... Lukaku, every time he comes on, or he's been doing yeah. the bits now. He's been doing the bits, so it's hard call. It's like really <laughs> tough, man. It's really tough. 
I don't. I wouldn't want to be manager at that time. Play them all free, man. Play them all free. Oh, imagine that. But as you say, Poch, which is he's he's, he's going to do the right thing. He's going to speak to Lukaku. If Lukaku is adamant, he doesn't want to come back. What can we do, man? That's football, man. What can we do? Not many clubs. Take the money, man. Take not the many money, clubs yeah. can afford him. Inter wouldn't be able yeah. to afford him. They might have to. Maybe another loan. Maybe another loan. Yeah. 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 But yeah. again, we also mentioned these. Look at the trim down the squad. Dennis Zakaria has gone. He's left yeah. Chelsea. He's not looking yeah. to sign him permanently. I thought he was kind of unlucky with obviously other midfield options when he did play for yeah, us. Yeah, I actually yeah. thought he did quite a good job. He looked actually, decent, yeah. And. I like the player as well. I've, I've, there is, there is. Well, we've got Loftus Cheek, who you just selling probably to AC Milan. Well, this I mean? is it. Where Loftus Cheek is looks like he's going. I saw him uh, at, New, at the Newcastle game. His number came up. Everybody who was everybody stood up to applaud him, and he pretty much mm, did say goodbye. Lovely player, man. You know, wave to everybody. I, I have been hearing it's twenty million pounds, which I think bloody good to be perfectly honest to get 20 million through um loftus cheek and i and i've said this he's got one year left on his contract he's got one year left on his contract i think it's a great move for everybody it's a great move for chelsea i think it's an even better move for loftus cheek to get an experience and something that i think that you might even uh, relate to it's it's a new challenge he's been at chelsea for such a long time he's obviously looked at the situation he's he could probably get more games at ac milan He's obviously probably had a chat with if, Pakai. If he has no injuries, I think he will be fantastic. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think he'll definitely improve AC's, AC's midfield. And he's obviously, yeah. he may have also had a chat with Olivier Giroud as well, talking about yeah, how Amelan is as well. It's a great move. So that's one significant move. But the one that seems to be breaking as we're speaking, Milan, I don't know whether you've seen this, but it seems as if Mateo Kovacic... Is going to be going. Man City. There, is, there is talks that Man City are entering talks Man, with Chelsea God, improving. Oh, he's over improving. Mateo Kovacic. Uh, are you are you surprised? Are you are you thinking that Mateo should stay, or do you think that it's now time? Or like like me, who feels that it's time for Mateo Kovacic to leave? Depends who comes in for him. Do you know what I mean? Like, who are you going to replace Kovacic with? Maybe Kante is not staying. I see. Uh, apparently, after his recent recent injury, the uh, offer is not on the table. He changed, or he's on standby. Mason Mount maybe leaves. Um, you have blocked the cheek leaving. Like, okay, they speak about U- Ugarte, who we don't know if he's gonna be good or not. I saw, I saw some clips where Enzo uh, twisted him up uh, with Benfica against Sporting. Um, who knows, man? Who knows what the what they have in plans, the sporting directors and um, people behind the scenes. But Kovacic, man, you got it's a We've, good player, man. Twenty nine years old, and Guardiola wants him, man. Come on, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just to touch on the potential Ugarte deal, and apparently his release clause is fifty two million pounds. My sort of instincts is telling me that we're again we're linked with him because he's he was we're linked with everyone, mate. We were linked, linked with everyone. We're linked with him because he's he was allegedly close to joining PSG, but now we've now entered the race. My Saicedo from Brighton, apparently, we are leading the race to sign him for 60 to 65 million. It, my, my my question to you is, in terms of players that we're linked with, is it just the same as what it was with January, whereby, oh, Mudrick's close to joining Arsenal. Oh, we need to make a bid. Let's see if we can do a deal. Is d- Does that strike you as something that this could be happening again, Deja Vu? No, no. Everything is possible. It's football, man. Listen, uh, transfer period, everybody speaks. There's so many rumours. He goes there, he goes there. They want him, they want that. Uh, until it's signed and sealed, and uh, Chelsea on Twitter or Instagram announce it, then obviously it's yeah. not it's not done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know. I haven't seen too much of Ugarte, so I can't really comment. Uh, no, neither, neither have I. Neither have I. Uh, so think... I have, I will, obviously on YouTube, I will have a look. I will have a look on YouTube. Uh, if if Paris Saint Germain want him and Chelsea, obviously he's not uh, he's not a mug, so. <laughs> No, oh no, no, and from yeah. what from what I can gather, he, he he's a he's a potential rising star. You know, he's got there go. very okay. similar traits that 
could obviously influence Enzo Fernandez and could make him flourish okay. as well, yeah. which will probably yeah, yeah, help yeah. and make Enzo better. It would obviously help our midfield better. But just briefly b- to b- uh, back on Mateo Kovacic before we move on to other players. Mm. He goes to Man City. Do you expect him to be in the first team at Man City or do you expect him to make yeah, it? Yeah, he will play. He will play. But do you think he Pedro will takes a lot. They've got so many um, competitions that they play. He rotates a lot and he... On the ball, he's fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So he will. I think he will fit in re- really well there. Calvin Phillips must be fuming though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Calvin did say on a TV interview that he's got no plans to leave. Well, if City yeah. end up buying one or two other midfielders, I think those plans. But I like that. Be- I like that. I like that. You know, fight, fight, fight for your players. I like that. Mm. I like that. He had injury at the start. Obviously, now preseason without injury, hopefully that's well. He keeps, he keeps, uh, keeps getting picked uh, with McGrath for England, even though he doesn't play. So, obviously, people rate him. People rate him. But we'll touch on Mason Mount briefly. Thankfully, there's been no significant developments about Mason Mount's future this week from mm. our good friend Fabrizio. But there are sort of, you know, certain Chelsea fans are thinking that he is going to leave. They don't want him to go to Man United. They don't want him to go to Arsenal. But to be honest, there isn't many options for him to go. There was rumours about Bayern Munich. I don't know whether that's going to be any significant. I don't know. But Mount, 55 million. Again, one year left on his deal. It just seems that Chelsea aren't going to be rushing to give him the deal that he wants. And obviously Mount's looking at the situation. Can you see Mason staying at Chelsea? If they give him what he wants, yeah. If not, and somebody else does, then you probably go. Okay, he goes to a rival. But that that's football. Do you know what I mean? Frank Lampard went to Man City. So what? Scored against Chelsea. It's football. It happens, man. It happens. If they if they don't appreciate you somewhere, especially at the club where you grew up. Yeah. Strange, man. Strange, strange. But listen, so hard with contracts and that. Not negotiations, uh, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult. A quick word on Thiago Silva, who we know is going to stay. He signed can a new deal. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Thiago Silva signed a new deal. He's good to okay. go. Um, He doesn't look like he's going to be leaving anyway. Yeah, 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 that's good. That's good. Like, a lot of experience, obviously, there. Uh, I saw that he was... I saw that he wants to be a part of the project, um, rebuilding to help Pochettino as well. So fantastic that he stays. He won the Chelsea Player of the Year. Are you surprised with that? No, no. Um, who else? Who else can we give it to? That's what Maybe I'm there, was no, there was no one else. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, no one Louis else. Hall. Louis Hall. Last uh, last games. Louis Hall. Listen. The guy, 18 years old, Lewis played got young most of the games years, against Liverpool. I think four times against City. Manu, yeah. Played against Manu. Lewis Hall got young Proved player himself year. against yeah. top, top 14. Yeah. He's a um, good man. He's good. Good young player. One other player before we then sort of discuss, obviously, our predictions for next season. Uh, Aspilicueta got a, a, a great sort of little tribute from the Chelsea supporters at the final game against Newcastle. The Shed End had the good banners with uh, Aspilicueta legend. He, he hasn't come out and said he's leaving. There are talks mm-hmm. that he is going to go. Do you suspect that he will? And if he does, how do you think he, he ranks in terms of legend status at Chelsea? Where, where do you see him compared with the likes of the others? No, I think obviously he's a legend of the team. Won every possible trophy, I guess. Uh, played so many games for the club. Good leader. But sometimes um, time comes, you know, when um, when that's it. And but he's been fantastic seven in. We have to give him so much respect, man. Um, so fair, fair play to him. Fair play to him. And uh, just as I said, deserve a massive, massive, uh, massive respect. Yeah, good player, man. Good solid player, man. Seven, seven, seven out of ten, most of the games when he, obviously, when we were winning things. He gives you all the time, seven, eight, you know. Good, good player. Re, re, reliable? Yeah, that's the word. Reliable. Mr. Played reliable. out of position. Played out of position on the left uh, with Mourinho. Put, he put Ashley Cole on the bench. 
crazy. You know, yeah. Mourinho. Well, Mourinho is not a stupid guy. He wouldn't uh, bench Ashley Cole for uh, someone who uh, is uh, silly. You know. Exactly, and he, again, he's been a, a truly fantastic servant. And yeah, whatever he does, you need players like this. You need whatever he decides whatever, to do. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever. If he is to go, you know, I think everyone will remember him, and everyone will appreciate what he has done for the club. The Agreed. last little bit we're going to do, Milan, and I've done this on other sh- on on other episodes at the end of the seasons, is. With sort of had a little bit of a, a game, a little bit of a sort of a prediction in, into the future. Three yeah. players that you would, that not that you would want to sign, but who you think Chelsea could sign, and three okay. players that you would like to leave or you think will leave. So start. I think with the, start with the players that you would like to leave or you think will leave. Uh, yeah. I think Ziyech goes, Pulitzsch goes, and um, obviously Loftus-Cheek is leaving, but I don't want him to go because he's uh, homegrown. I don't want Mason Mount to go. Um, <laughs> Kukurela maybe goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably probably these three players. Oh, Koulibaly, Koulibaly. Koulibaly, okay. I'll, yeah. put, I'll put Koulibaly in. Right. Um, so you reckon by the time the transfer window shuts in on the 1st of September... Yeah, I think one it. of the keepers goes as well. One of the keepers goes as well. It's not people I want to go, but I think this this three, four, five people will go. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've added that onto the list. So when we have our show in September, we will, we will go back on it and see if you were right. All right, man. Three players that... Not just that you would like to see Chelsea sign, but who you think Chelsea will sign. We'll sign a goalkeeper, striker, and a midfielder for sure. Maybe one winger, but the names couldn't tell you, man. Couldn't tell you names. Uh, keeper from Milan, Ona, Ona, Ona. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Is that? I believe it could be him. I believe it could be striker. Who, man? Who? Who are we signing? Osiman, possibly. Uh, Vlahovic. Don't know if he. Come, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. Maybe one of them two strikers that would be nice. I'll, I'll put uh, we need a winger. We need a winger. Uh, but who is available on the wing? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's difficult. Obviously, scouting and this, it's not what we do. Hazard, Hazard, I want Hazard back, man. But he's Hazard like... back. Oh, that's a, that, 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 that would be a bit of out of left. Yeah, but Hazard fit. Fit then uh, 100%, not like uh, he's been in the past uh, few uh, years. But uh, you know what? I saw today Benzema might go. Uh, Asensio yes. obviously is going to Aston Villa. So the next year is Vinicius, Rodrigo and uh, Hazard. Uh, contracted players like uh, um, front three. Maybe he gets his chance, but I think they will buy someone, obviously. To not I, play think you, I think they'll buy somebody else. <laughs> yeah, they're not playing him. They don't. Ancelotti... Just doesn't rate him anymore. Doesn't rate him, does he? No. Ah, football. One final player that you did. D- okay, one final player. Declan Rice. Just... Declan Rice. Oh Declan yes, Rice. yes. Declan Rice. Yeah, man. Declan Rice. I would like. So Anana, Vlaovic, and Rice. Mm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This would be good, man. Yeah, interesting. Austin man or Vlaovic? I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, I'll tell things. you what. I'll put. I'll. I'll put Aussie main slash Val- v- Vlaovic. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Right. As you're new to the show, you can have another one. That's fine. So that'll be interesting come the 1st of September. We'll see whether your predictions are, are correct. And then we'll uh, we will then uh, dissect it through cool, cool. September. But that'll be good. So in terms of Chelsea, we ha- we're hoping Poch will do good in the summer. It's going to be a long preseason because of the preseason schedules in America. Yeah. But we'll see what happens with the summer, we are expecting more departures. We're expecting a lot of incomings, but mm. wh- whatever happens, we're going to be wishing Poch all the best, and we're going to be hoping that the players they will yes, improve. Free. They, they, free they, are free to, they are going to improve on this season's huge cock up. But can only get worse, mate. It couldn't get worse because otherwise we get relegated. So it can't get worse. Do you know what I mean? 
No, that is true. So I hope <laughs> the, the quicker we get to 40 points, the better. But in terms of Chelsea in the summer, we are going to be taking a break for, with the podcast. We're going to got we've got maybe one or two shows planned before we have our summer break. We are going to take a summer break for the first time, but we will be back in August. Milan's going nice. to be here. We're going to be looking at all everything that's gone on between. The, our little break, which will be probably at the end of June and all in, in August. But if you've liked what you've heard, download us uh, any place you find your favourite podcast. We will hopefully maybe have a few announcements in the next coming weeks in terms of where else you can f- hear from us. But you can find us as well on YouTube. Find us on facebook.com slash the Blue Day podcast. Find Milan on Instagram as well at which is your feed, Milan? Welcome to Milan 10. There you go. You can find him on there. You can find us at the Blue Day Podcast as well. Find us on Twitter as well. Milan is very vocal on Twitter, but every 99% of the time he is correct on there. You can find us on Twitter at the Blue Day Pod. But for everyone who has enjoyed our episodes over the course of the season, thank you for listening to us. Your support is very much appreciated. Enjoy the summer off, folks. Stay safe and carefree. 